For those of you who have not been here, if this is your first time, we are going through the 12 steps and applying them to our life regardless of um, what our addiction is because our addiction can be anything, can it? How many of you find yourself looking at Facebook even during Sunday service? Just, right? Yeah. See? God, what if, what if somebody sent me something? I mean, literally, the only reason I don't look at Facebook during Sunday service is because my phone's over there. As long as my phone's not with me, I'm fine. But if you put it in front of me, you can check with Paul after service. I have to look at it about every five to ten minutes. I know. It's, so, 12 steps. The reason we're talking about them is because they've been around since 1935, and they work. And there is that 12-step saying, they work if you work them. And so it's not like you can read them and go, okay, I'm good. You actually have to do them, and these steps are not for the light of heart. These steps require commitment, and they require a lot of responsibility. So we're going to start off today um, just reading step eight, which in AA is made a list of all the people we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. In the 12 steps for everyone, because I'm using three books, as I've told you, Step eight says, we made a list of all the people who were negatively impacted about how we acted out our problem. I know. I wanted to make that face, too. <laughs> this is my favorite book because there are newcomers here. I will tell you it is not in our bookstore because if you know Russell Brand, you know if you've ever seen him. He has salty language, salty language, and I can't even say how he does the 12 steps. I always pick a word that he uses and I replace it. You can figure it out for yourself. Step eight says, prepare to apologize to everything, everyone for everything affected by your being so messed up. And then this time with the New Thought Journey, and this is the book that is in the bookstore, I recommend it because look, it's tiny. Now, here's one thing about these steps I will tell you. We're doing them in 12 weeks. I would venture to say at the very minimum, it should take you a year. You know, some of these steps you would want to sit with. This is probably one of them. So what she says is back to what AA said. Made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. So it's about respect. It's about respect for yourself. It's about respect for others. You can't respect others if you don't respect yourself, just so we're clear. You are a mirror. That is what we teach here. Everything in your life is a mirror back to you. So if you want to respect others, start here. So the first step in step eight really is about taking responsibility for your life. So how many of you could think of one person that you've harmed just think of them for a minute. And immediately go to, yeah, but you don't know what they did to me, right? So here's the thing. And don't move to step nine. We're just making a list here, okay? You are just making a list of people that you have harmed. Taking responsibility for your behavior, regardless of what their behavior was. Their behavior doesn't matter. They get to clean up their side of the street when they choose. This is all about you clearing out your conscious, consciousness, right? And so every time you hold somebody prisoner in your mind, you are giving them space. I have said this before. The first time Reverend Susie said to me, let him go, Gail, you divorced him. Why do you keep playing over and over and over again? the tapes in your head about him because I thought I was righteous that's why look what he'd done to me she goes yeah and he's still doing it he's still controlling space so taking responsibility for anybody that you've done harm to now harm seems like a kind of a, a hard word so anybody that you've offended in any way I know that's a big sigh. My list will be long. And I've been working these steps 
for 17 years. It's an ongoing process. You don't work the steps once. Russell Brand says in his book, he lives with the steps, especially in the middle, the ones that are the most difficult. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those you redo all the time. All the time. So taking responsibility. And here's the deal. If you're really brave, you can look at the people that you are sure have ha harmed you and look at your side of the street and make sure it's clean. Because if it's not, you owe that person an amends too. Right? So, E, empathy. Yes, I am spelling respect. It helps me remember where I'm going today. So having empathy, does everybody know what that means? It is like, what if I were in that person's shoes? What if you didn't have the best mom or dad in the world? And what if instead of constantly being angry with them and telling the world how awful they were, you put yourself in their shoes just for a moment to imagine what their life must have been like to be able to treat you the way they treated you. Because that doesn't happen in a vacuum. Somebody doesn't behave against you just out of the blue. It's passed down behavior. And so if your mom treated you a particular way that really upsets you, the best thing you can do is show some empathy towards that relationship and then choose to be a living amends to never treat anybody the way she treated you. Does that make make sense or your dad or a school teacher whatever living amends means I'm gonna be better I'm gonna do better and then for the S it's silence and this is a different kind of silence this isn't meditation this isn't sleeping it is spending 10 minutes every single day no TV no cell phone no meditation just sit just sit and be in the now if you see something just notice it if you hear something just wonder if your mind goes off on a path bring it back I'm just sitting what will happen is you open up yourselves to that greater sense of who you are you absolutely allow yourself to be present to the world, to be in that now moment, which we forget, don't we? We're always either living in the past or projecting out into the future. And when we do that, we forget the joy of being right here, right now, in this moment. So give yourself the practice of silence every day, 10 minutes. P is about patience. I always like it when I say this word. Patience, because I don't have a lot. I'm getting better and still. So patience. It's about knowing none of these steps, including this one, are you ever going to get perfect. None of them, because we're not looking for protection. For protection. We're not looking for perfection. We are looking for how can I become a better sense of me, who I am. And so have patience with yourself. Have patience with this list. It's just the list, remember? We're not doing step nine. It's just the list. You're just writing down people. You know, one way to do it is write down everybody you know. Everybody you know. And then start scratching people off you don't have to make amends to. The scratch-offs, you know, because we've probably offended everybody once at least and if we haven't made amends then we still have an opportunity to do that so allowing yourself to be patient with yourself what happens when we start to be patient when we start to make this list when we start to write down how we have taken responsibility for ourselves you find enlightenment you start to find that essence of oh goodness, I really am God in form. I really am that bright light in the world. Whether I study to do it or whether I just choose to be a better person, I get to choose that. 
every single day, over and over and over again, I get to choose. Who am I? How am I going to show up? What does this mean? The C, what's it going to stand for? Courage. This takes courage. There are people that will go their whole entire lives holding a grudge against somebody. People, places, things. It's victimhood consciousness, and it's prevalent in our society. We always want to look outside of ourselves for who did what to who. It's just easier, isn't it? Than saying, what was my part in this? What was my part in this? What did I do? How did I mistreat somebody? And then the last one was hard for me, just to come up with what a T would mean. And it's timely. Because here's the thing about this step. As you do it, and I suggest that you do it, again, not looking forward, you're just making a list. What if you just made a list of all the people you offended? or all the people whose heart you broke, or all the people who disappointed you and you're carrying them around in your head. Just a list. And timeliness is just about the fact of, are you ready and are you willing now to do something with that list? And that will take us into step nine. So step eight is something that we teach here all the time the time. It's not about making a list. It's about taking responsibility for your life and knowing the perfection that you truly are. That sin is just missing the mark. That's all it means. None of us has done anything so grievous, 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 that we can't be forgiven for it. None of us. And I'm telling you, stacked up to some of you, my list might be longer. And it's not a competition. And the best gift you can give anybody is absolutely knowing that regardless of what their list is, it takes real courage to write something down that says, I made a mistake. I misbehave. I was awful. And this is the step you get to do all your life, right? From this day forward, you claim it in the moment. In the moment, you take responsibility. You have empathy for the person that made you so angry that you decided you were going to tell them, you were going to show them. Or you just did something out of character and you were angry to somebody or not pleasant to somebody. You sit in the silence for 10 minutes every day. It's not a meditation. It's just sitting in the now moment, just being present. You give yourself patience because sometimes, how many think amends are easy? Yeah, absolutely, not so much. Not so much. Amends are not easy. Amends is taking the biggest frog on the plate and eating it first, if you're going to eat frogs. It is absolutely knowing this isn't about them. This is about you. And the only way you are going to live your life absolutely out loud, boldly, courageously, is by allowing yourself this gift of you're not always right 90% of the time, believe it or not. You're right in your mind. It doesn't mean you're right in the other person's mind. You're both right. That's that's the gift we give each other. So patience. Oh, (laughs) R-E-S-P-E. Enlightenment. Give yourself the gift of enlightenment. Show yourself some courage. And do this in a timely fashion. And B and Bernie and I were going R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. Okay, Retha, I know. I can't carry a tune. (laughs) But anyway, so it's all about respect. And that's the gift we're going to start giving ourselves by making a list. Different than at Christmas. 
just make a list. And if you need to start somewhere, start with everybody you know and then go back. And I don't mean just everybody you know currently. I mean everybody you know. Everybody's name you can remember. I know. Everybody. And then go back and say, do I owe them amends? Now here's the deal. Some people you will. Some people you have been in difficult relationships with and you'll look at it and you go, I don't owe that person an amends. And I'll give you an example. My ex-husband, abusive. I could, I could make amends and say, now that I know about energy and, and how we attract things to us, and yet, no, I don't owe him amends. And I got very, you know, I had to sit with it a long time and look at my side of the street. Yes, I absolutely was in victimhood. It doesn't mean I owe him amends for being a bully or being brutal. So don't put yourself, don't guilt yourself to death on every single person. You know, be very clear. I have got something here on my side of the street. Another example for me was, um, and I owe this person amends, and as I was sitting in meditation, oh, thank you, B, for that. <laughs> as I was sitting in meditation, it came to me, and uh, it was somebody in Santa Fe that I had um, a head-to-head -head confrontation with, and it was more like a brother and sister screaming match than it was a minister and her board president. And so what I know is regardless of what I think brought on that situation, whether I think that um, what, he, what his intent was behind the whole situation, I, owed him, I owe him an amends because I was out of character. That's mine. And when I make my amends, I don't get to shame him or blame him for why I behaved the way I did. That's mine. Do you see the difference? And do you understand what this is about? This is about you and taking responsibility. And when you do that, you only get to point one finger right here. You don't get to start listing off to the person, oh, I, I'm, I'm making amends, I'm really sorry, but by the way, I wouldn't have done that if you hadn't done this. That's not amends. That's guilt and shame. And then you're going to have to make another amends, so clean it up up front. So let's pray. Ah, Mother, Mother, Father, God, Spirit, as we stand and sit here in this glorious day, this day of owning who we are, taking responsibility for the life we are living, loving ourselves so much we gift ourselves this gift of just making a list. We allow ourselves to clear out all the rubbish that is attached to us, that we have taken on in our righteousness, in our self-protection, in our cloak and shield. We let that go. We lay it all down and we just make this list of allowing ourselves that clarity of purpose of coming back to that place of knowing the truth of who we are, God in form, and that which always has been and always will be knows only love. Knows only love as it is right here and right now. It is expressing itself in and through and as each of you. And so hold on to that, be that. Be the, be that which you want to see in the world not just in your home, in the world. If you want peace, be that peace. If you want love, be that love. If you want respect, be respectful. And so I am so grateful for this time, for this place, for this knowing that God itself lives and breathes and has its existence through all of us. And that each one of us get to express that absolutely the very best we can and we are always revealing to ourselves another way of being of knowing and of showing the truth to ourselves and to the world 
So thank you, Mother, Father, God, Spirit, right here and right now for allowing each one of us to lay down the armor, to take responsibility, and to live our life truly out loud and courageous. So I turn all of these words over knowing that as it is spoken, it is done. The universe has said yes, because that's the only thing it ever does. And it is in that yes that we all let go, we let God, and together we say, and so it is. Namaste.